All right, what's up, you guys? So um, I wanted to get into this. You guys have been asking me to do like Maryland-based schools, and so that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, tomorrow, Friday, I think is what I said, I will be going live on GTCU to do um, one of the schools you requested. It's either going to be Loma Linda or one of the Nova schools, probably uh, one of the Nova schools since there's so many. Um, so if you're interested in any of those schools, then you have to join GTCU. See you to see that one. Okay. Um, but let's get into it. Uh, just again, I'm going to go over to CASPA, which is where you'll find all of the participating programs. Um, and you're welcome, Ayanna, because I know you've been the one that's been asking me for, for this program. Uh, let me share my screen with you all so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about with respect to CASPA uh, and then also the school that we're going to be looking at today. So CASPA's participating programs, you'll see here, it has all of the various different um, deadline colors and dates and what that means. Um, so let's see. Okay. So maybe, all right, so let's look for it. You know, I think she called it University of Baltimore. Let's see. Let's go all the way down to the universities. Uh, because I'm used to calling it Anne Arundel Community College. So, yeah, so University of Maryland, Baltimore is what it's called. Um, and that is a dual program with Towson, I believe. All right, let's look at this. Let's kind of search this. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put it into the tab, actually. And let's see what comes up. Their PA program. And so I will likely switch the name of this because, yeah. It's not the same thing. It's called something different. Okay, so let me just let me just search this really quickly. Oh, so there's two. All right, so you guys, there are two um, different um, schools that I'm looking at. So I'm doing. Today, actually, I'm going to be doing the University of Baltimore, okay? So, like, let's take a look at all of that because that's what Ayanna really wanted me to look at. So, University of Maryland um, PAs programs, and this is University of Maryland Baltimore because there's College Park, there's uh, Eastern Shore, there's lots of University of Maryland's, okay? So, um, I like this picture. Everybody looks like they're having fun. It's 100. So this is really cool. I like the fact that there is like a program snapshot right when you get into it, essentially like giving you how many people are going to be admitted into their program, giving you how many credits it is, and then essentially the cost. OK, so cost per credit hours. $710 if you're a resident of Maryland, if you're a non-resident, uh, almost $1,000. So you can multiply that by 116 and you're already over, you know, like you're, you're high, <laughs> like that's a hundred thousand dollars. So, um, you just want to make sure that again, you're, you're paying attention to the cost of these programs because they can be very, very costly. Um, and attrition, like we'll, we'll get into that right now as well. Okay, so let's just go down the line. Academics, again, I always tell you guys, look at, oh, so here it is. All right, so it's the, sa it's the same thing. All right, so I wasn't like, I wasn't going crazy when I thought it was Anne Arundel Community College, okay? So it says the University of Maryland Baltimore Graduate School and Anne Arundel Community College promote excellence in education to foster the development of the component, uh, comp is that competent, ethical, and compassionate primary care providers. So their focus is primary care providers. Um, it's a little bit confusing. So don't uh, don't get yourself confused because it's they have their own aspect of um, a website for their PA program as well as Anne Arundel's. Uh, Anne Arundel has their own as well. And I want to show you guys that too. Um, so let me just share 
that um, that part of my screen because I pulled it up just to make sure that that I wasn't reviewing the wrong school. And I'm sorry, not reviewing. We're researching. There we go. Because you know. I'm not telling you to go here or not. Okay, so this is Anne Arundel Community College's PA program site. Okay, so same same school. It says it here, University of Maryland, Baltimore. We are now the University of Maryland, Baltimore slash Anne Arundel Community College Collaborative Physician Assistant Program. Okay, so long name, same school. We got this. All right, so let's go back to what I was looking at. Um, on that other tab for you guys. So, academics. All right, so look at their mission, look at their vision, and look at their goals. These are important things. You need to know specifically what the mission of the school is, what the vision is, how you as an applicant can fit into that mission and the goals that the schools are trying to um, accomplish, okay? Uh, curriculum for students. Okay, so this is how they have it split up. I guess you would take 86 at AACC and then 30 at UMB. Okay, so that would get you your combined 116. Um, I, I don't know exactly how it works, like if you're actually going to each campus while you're there, uh, you know, for different years, but uh, that's it's interesting, but it is a dual like a like a hybrid kind of dual program with the community college and the university. So this just shows you all of the various different classes that you're going to take. Clinical medicine is like what I did in PA school. We called it medical practice, but that's where you learn how to diagnose and treat um, the various different illnesses that you're going to be seeing as a PA. OK, so if you're interested in that, you can look there. Um, curriculum for Perspective students, first year. Da, da, da. All right. So again, just looking at that transcript and degree verification. Students who graduated in 2019 or before, please refer to Anne Arundel Community College office or reg. I guess this is if you students who will graduate in 2020. So this is if you need your transcripts like from the school. All right, let's look at attrition. Attrition is really uh, important because it tells you like, how are they like keeping, you know, are they retaining students in their program? Um, so class of 2019 to 2021, their, their maximum entering class size is 40. Uh, the students that they actually like allowed in. So again, they have they have the ability to have 40 students, okay, 40 seats. Um, each year you see that they've kind of increased it to that that max. Like this class of 2021 has 40 students. Uh, right now, uh, the number of graduates is 39. So maybe someone decelerated or just uh, you know dropped out. Or got kicked out. You don't know. Um, but showing you their attrition rate, uh, it was pretty high in 2019, uh, lower in 2020. And obviously, um, as of right now for 2021, it's significantly low. But, you know, there's still time. So it's not to say that that is um, what it's going to end up being. Uh, but it is important for you to know how schools are doing with their attrition rate. OK. Um. All right, let's see what else. Accreditation. They really, is this the same? No, I think, I'm like, they really like these like black men over here. They're like, that's, that's who they're like promoting. I guess they want like males or something. Who knows? Let's, we can say that. But um, another picture of an African-American man wearing his short white coat. Um, they have continued accreditation, which is good. Again, there's provisional, there's probation, there's continued, um, and then there's no accreditation because you're a developing program. So they have continued accreditation. So that is good to know. Uh, their next evaluation will be 2029. So that's also good to know because you know that you're kind of set for the next few years. Um, if if for whatever reason uh, you do get accepted to the program, you have no worries there that, you know, the program is going to get shut down or anything like that. All right. So let's look at their pants pass rate. 
Wow, they have a lot of guys in their program. One, two, three, four. I don't know if this is a guy or a girl's head. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Wow, that's a lot, you guys, because I mean, typically you'll have like maybe a third, if not like a fourth of the class is males and the majority is females. So that's kind of cool. All right, let's look at this past pants rate. Okay, so I'm going to have to share that screen with you guys because you're not going to be able to see it because it popped into another window. Um, so let me go here and share that. Hey, Logan. Logan said hello, you guys. Um, let's see. Program pass pants rate. Right okay. All right, so they have the last five years, which most schools typically have that unless they haven't been in existence for five years, okay? Um, so let's look at 2016. They had 36, 33 of them passed, okay? Um, that's not too bad. Had 57 of all, you know, all of the class took it. 53 passed. So they've been kind of steadily in the 90s, which is an A that's passing. That's actually pretty good. Um, looking at it in comparison to the national pa um, pants pass rate, you know, um, they're a little bit lower, but that not significantly. So for you to be like, you know, what's going on here? 2019, y'all, that was a bad year for everybody, okay? Um, look at the national uh, pants pass rate was 91%. Um, and they're here at 40, 94%, which is good. They did better. So of the 30 that took it, only one didn't pass. And then 37, oh, y'all, they got 100% pass, pass rate for uh, 2020. So that's like something to actually be really, 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 really proud about. Okay, so let's go to go back to the program and see what else they have to offer us. What else you guys should be learning about this? Uh, license disclosure, graduates of University of Maryland are eligible to take, okay, eligible to take the pants. All right, this is what you guys came here for, admission requirements. So let's go. All right. So students enter the PA program in the summer term of each year. So this is a summer start, um, likely maybe May or June start. Uh, and then it's 25 months long, okay? So a little over two years. Uh, therefore, students should plan finances carefully. Yes, indeed. The average GPA is a 3.0. Uh, that is your like minimum GPA that you need. Um, and all physician assistants, students are required to have personal digital assistance, email address, and internet access. Okay, cool. All right, admissions requirements. Okay, so this is this is the school. I don't know if you guys heard me before where I was like, you know, one of the years I applied to a, like these schools and I just was not paying attention. I was just kind of like, oh, whatever, I'll be able to get in. And there was a school that said the minimum, you could have nothing lower than a B. And I had a B minus and I didn't get in, okay, because I had a B minus because I didn't meet the requirements. And so this is that school, you guys. I have no shame in saying that, but it says applicants um, to the PA program must have a bachelor's degree or higher. They require the GRE, okay. Um, nothing said about the PA cat. So GRE is still king for this particular program. And then it says a completion of the following prerequisite courses with a minimum grade of B in each course, not B minus B, okay? So just be mindful of that. Um, so statistics, micro anatomy and physiology one and two, introduction to psychology or developmental psychology, uh, general chemistry, OCHEM or biochem, which is cool. They allow you to choose uh, prerequisites provided in the admissions information to ensure equivalency prior to submitting a CASPA application. Um, this is also something to keep in mind that the anatomy and physiology courses are required to have been completed in the last seven years of the date um, that you submit your CASPA application. And so 
I know you guys have seen some of the schools that we did in the past um, that I showed you in the past, and they don't all have like this year cap, but this one has it, but solely on anatomy and physiology. So not on all of the classes that you have ever taken in your life. So just keep that in mind. If you took anatomy and physiology as a senior, then you should be good. If you maybe took like one or two gap years, you're still well within that seven year period. Okay. Uh, applicants to the PA program must submit their application through CASPA. Again, minimum cumulative GPA of a 3.0, um, no prerequisite minimum grade of you know, like and nothing underneath a B. Um, UMB must receive the CASPA completed application by the deadline date of September 1st. So again, these, you know, these dates are, are past. Um, and I'll look at some of the schools to see if, uh, there's any schools that have these like December, uh, timelines or January or March, um, deadlines so that if you're still interested in applying to PA school, um, you know, we'll have some of those programs there for you that actually like you can apply to still with the information that I'm providing, okay? Uh, it says foreign educated students must have their international college transcripts from all higher level institutions attended, uh, evaluated by our WES, um, Spantra, or ECE, which is cool. So they do accept um, foreign grads or foreign educated students. Um, so for everybody that, you know, all of my Indian brothers and sisters that are out there and you guys keep like asking me like, hey, you know, how do I become PA in America? I wanna study, uh, you know, PA in America. Like this is one of the programs that will accept you. You have to go get it evaluated by one of these sites and um, see that you meet all of those various different requirements uh, for the prereqs and then apply. And that's, it's really that simple. Okay. Applicants who use native language. Okay. So if you, if English is not your first language, then you would have to um, take the test of English as a foreign language, which is, um, you know, if, if English is not your native language, typically you've heard of this test before. All right. Um, so that is that. What is this uh, aspect? Academic standards. So again, um, all PA students must receive a minimum grade of a C in each of your PA course. So nothing lower than a C. Um, selection criteria. So these are the things that they look at, obviously not limited to this, but they look at your cumulative GPA, your science GPA, your letters of recommendation, which again are all things that you will be adding into CASPA, patient contact experience, community or civil service, um, any of the recommended courses that they may have, your GRE scores, and then obviously your interview. That is like the final step to getting an acceptance. Uh, it says a non-refundable seat deposit is, is, is required upon acceptance, with, like most schools, um, and no selection decisions will be communicated via telephone and or email. The decision of the PA admissions committee is final. Oh, okay, so... May, uh, so maybe they send out, like, I don't know who uses, like, snail mail anymore, but maybe they send out, like, snail mail. It says it's not going to be communicated via telephone or email. Um, I don't know if that's, like, if you call them and you're, like, asking if you got in, like, they're not going to communicate it that way, but they would reach out to you. I'm not really sure, but um, that's a statement that they've made there. Uh, students who are provisionally accepted to this program of study will be required to submit a health examination record. So, you know, I mean, you have to, you have to have a physical done. I had to have one done for my PA program as well. And you have to have insurance. Um, also the criminal background check, that's also something that you have to have done and you'll need like ones with fingerprints because, um, when you're doing like your peds rotation, they want to know, like, you know, like there's nothing in your background, um, that would adversely affect any of the children that you will be essentially taking care of. Uh, readmission to the PA course sequence. Students seeking readmission to the PA program are referred to the PA. Okay. Specific requirements and eligibilities must be met for readmission. The University of Maryland Baltimore PA program does not offer advanced placement or a transfer and again, health insurance. So let's see if we can find this manual that they're talking about. PA admissions booklet, is it this? 
Uh, yeah, I don't know if we can go through all of this because this is like 29 pages of information. Um, I'm going to look and see specifically if there's anything in here worth uh, while. But if you, you're interested in it, you can always go and look at this yourself. Um, all right, let's just, let's. Let's just go, we'll look at that. Let's look at their manual, okay? All right, Ayanna has a question as well. Let's get that. Um, I'm wondering what they mean by statistics, a math statistics or something else. So it was uh, a math statistics that I did, but um, this admissions requirements thing that I'm about to share with you guys, um, I think kind of goes into it a little bit uh, more in depth. So hopefully we'll be able to answer that question for you, okay? All right, so yeah, I'm right on the page. So prerequisite requirements, it shows you all of their six uh, requirements. And you see here it says B minus grades will not be accepted, okay? I did not see this when I applied like three or how many years ago? Maybe uh, four or four or so years ago. Maybe it was five. I'm not really sure how many years ago it was. It was a while ago, but um, I didn't see that. I probably like just glanced past it and um, yeah, not accepted. Okay. So that means it doesn't meet the requirements, but it says statistics here. So it gives you all of the various different types of statistics, uh, elementary statistics, statistics in social and behavioral sciences or biostatistics. Um, and that elementary statistics is your math, like your general, your general math statistics. Okay. Um, we accept AP courses must be official from the college board for psychology, um, statistics, and general chemistry. So they do accept AP courses for those three uh, those three classes listed, um, but clearly nothing else. So uh, just keep that in mind if you are like coming straight out of you know college and you took like um, biostatistics or statistics or psych as a senior, like I did um, for college credit. Um, they will accept it, but only those those particular classes, okay? All right, so here, uh, patient contact experience. It says a minimum of 1,400 hours of patient contact experience is recommended, but not required. And so again, if something is recommended, I highly, highly, highly suggest that you go after it, okay? Um, try to attain that with all your strength and your might, because I'm pretty sure that people are coming in with like higher than 1,400. So definitely shoot for that, okay? Um, you're going to have, uh, patient contact experience must be reported on CASPA. Okay, great. Um, and you'll put all of that information in, in CASPA. Uh, and if you haven't seen like CASPA and what CASPA is all about, I did a CASPA video a while back. So just search it in my, um, my channel, uh, and you'll be able to see that video and what like CASPA looks like on the inside and like where you would put all that information in. So letters of recommendation, um, you, you know, CASPA requires about three. I think it has slots for about five, maybe. I don't know. But it's like three. Most schools require about two um, LORs. So that, again, will also be um, in CASPA. And then GRE, you will give them this code here um, when you take your GRE test to have them send your scores directly to the program. <coughs> Um, so again, this is, uh, just talking about our foreign medical graduates, uh, exemptions. So all of the, these different, um, countries, like, look, Trinidad and Tobago right there. That's my country, you guys. <laughs> but all these countries have, um, exemptions to the, the test of English as a foreign language, um, because they have English as their primary language, likely, or one of their primary languages. So you wouldn't have to take it if you were born in Trinidad or from Trinidad. Just saying. 
All right. Um, so language must reflect a bachelor's degree, master's degree, um, or doctorate degree. Uh, so you can doctor of medicine degree. You can you can be like a foreign medical uh, physician um, and then come and apply to uh, Anne Arundel or University of Maryland, Baltimore. Um, and I guess just kind of like the PA name change, like don't use Anne Arundel Community College, call it the University of Maryland, Baltimore. So I'm going to change that in my title uh, just so you guys can get used to that because, you know, it's just, it's essential for you to use the name that the schools are, are changed to. Uh, selection criteria. So we kind of already went through this selection criteria and what they look at. Uh, talked about the criminal background, the technical standards, health insurance. Um, so again, if you're a non-citizen, you have to have like valid immigration documentation, like your green card and or your visa and all that stuff. Um, what else? The Office of Accountability and Compliance is available to advise and assist all students, staff, and faculty with their requests for reasonable accommodations. So I think this is important um, for anybody that uh, requires any type of accommodation um, with respect to test taking or, um, you know, getting in and out of facilities and just making things more amenable and, and better um, for you as a learner, as a student, so that you can actually succeed. So. Um, if this is you, you should absolutely keep this, uh, this link in, in mind if you do get accepted. All right. I mean, we're, we're breezing through this. All right. Prerequisite coursework description. So it just goes into more detail, um, what they are requiring, like in terms of those prereqs. And so you can always, if there's ever like a question and this is like, you never really think about this when you're an undergrad, but it's really important to keep your syllabi. Um, I kept like the syllabi to all of my, the different courses that I took. And it was important because when I was applying to one of the California schools, out west um, for my gross anatomy, which was mammalian anatomy by itself, where we did like cadavers and dissections um, into the cadavers. Like they wanted to know that, yes, we were still like learning like just basic anatomy essentially. And so I had to give them that syllabus to make sure that it met the standards. And so um, that's, I think, something that's key that you guys should keep in mind is to keep your syllabi so that you can prove that it meets the standards that they are um, requesting. Oh, this is, I like this. This is my part. This is what I really want you guys to see as well. Okay. So this give, gives you the makeup of the class over um, the last essentially like three years. Okay. So um, for the class of 2020, uh, there was an age range of 21 to 43, which is nice, you know, very inclusive. Uh, the average age range was 26. Um, there was 36% male and 64% female uh, in state, 77%. All right. So typically, and you can see that kind of across the, the board that um, about, well, I would say like, what, three fourths of their their program is in state residence. So if you are in the DMV area and you like want to stay in Maryland, um, this is a good school for you to apply to. Uh, so there had, wow, somebody had their doctorate. Um, there was eight master's degrees and they all had their bachelor's, um, which is cool. And, oh, and, um, for class of 2021, they had, uh, two foreign medical grads. So that's actually pretty, um, pretty telling as well that it's possible. Okay. Um, uh, Major field of undergraduate study is biology or exercise science was next, kinesiology and nursing. Um, like to see that, like to see nursing and kinesiology, like kind of not the typical norm for people. For other years, there was it's biology again, um, exercise science, genetics, psychology, and then biology coming in again, exercise science, public health, and biochem. All right, so average GPA of the, the various different classes. So 3.49, 3.55, and 3.56. So you can see that the average GPA is about a 3.5, okay? Um, so if you're trying to attend this program, you shoot for a 3.5, 3.6, 
uh, 3.7 because you know that you're pretty much on par with all of the other students that they have allowed into their program. Uh, their average science GPA is also about a 3.5, so you know, just keeping that in mind. And that their common patient care experience hours is either being a patient care tech or CNA, um, medical assistant, paramedics or EMTs, PT techs, rad techs, uh, and ophthalmic tech. That's interesting. That's unique. Uh, I, I've seen like maybe two or three or met like two or three ophthalmic uh, techs. So kind of pretty cool. But look at this, you guys. You, do you remember what I said? Do you remember what their minimum was? Their minimum patient care hours uh, was 1,400. Not required, but suggested. But look at the average patient uh, care hours that these people came in with. 4,500, 4,200, and 3,500. And that's telling, okay? And I keep telling you guys this, and anytime we have, um, you know, I have like a consultation session with any of you and we're looking at the schools that you're trying to apply to, um, you know, I keep it real with you guys that, look, if you have like 700 hours, but this school's minimum requirement or the average is like 3,300, you got to pick it up. You might want to, um, you know, pick up some extra shifts or, you know, if you have the opportunity to do so, maybe you might want to like take another year and actually just, just work and get more experience so that you can be more competitive. Um, and if you have the time and the space to do that, I would suggest you do that. Okay. Uh, so we talk about that a lot in our sessions. Uh, this, again, just kind of goes through the cumulative GPA, again, talking about a grade of B or higher in these prerequisite courses, B minus is not accepted. Um, anatomy and physiology, have to, uh, they have to have been completed in the last 70 years. Um, lots of reiteration. Um, if you do your research, like you really should not make any of the, like, the silly mistakes that I made when I applied uh, the, the last time. Um, do, 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 it talks about when their program opens, but look at this. It says when their deadline is, but it says it is strongly recommended that applicants submit their CASPA application by July 1st, okay? June, July, August. So that's like two months ahead of their deadline, okay? July 1st to ensure that the application is verified because it can take anywhere from four to six weeks for CASPA to verify your application in those early like summer months. So again, yes, I like, I say this again, but it's showing it here on their, their little booklet. Apply early, as early as you possibly can. Get all of your documents together like the year prior so that once April rolls around of the year that you want to apply, you can just hit submit, okay, after you've put in that information. So just keep that in mind. All right. Are you a competitive applicant? Do you have a minimum of 1,400 hours? Is it in any of these uh, these areas like EM? T, CNA, um, you know, are you a search tag? These are all options. Uh, it says shadowing is not considered patient contact experience, okay? Uh, and volunteering will be considered as community service, okay? Uh, is your science GPA in the range of 3.3 to 3.5? We saw that their average student had a 3.5. So if you are trying to apply to the school and you have like a 3.6, 3.7, you're sitting good. You're sitting easy. So you shouldn't really be concerned. Um, let's see if they have something about their GRE, a personal statement consisting of 300 to 500 words outlining your goals. So you'll have to write a personal statement. Okay, cool. Do you have community service? Do you have convention? conversational fluency in other languages. Oh, so that's cool. Like if you are, you know, um, if you have the ability to speak another language, that can be a benefit to you, especially in healthcare. So keep that in mind. Do you, do you follow the recommendations of anything with a B or better? B or better, not B minus. Um, those are what will make you competitive applicants. So it doesn't, 
it doesn't give like the average GRE score. And it didn't show that in their, their class makeup. So that's something that you just have to determine for yourself, like what you're shooting for. I think anything over a 310 is really good um, for you to shoot for. So, um, you know, like 155 on each thing is, I think, a decent thing to shoot for. So just keep that in mind. But But they don't give an average here. Uh, talks about the CASP application process. And I like this, okay? Um, because, so probably if you guys are watching this and you're like applying to other schools and you're like, oh, well, what should I do for my patient care experience? Th this program lays it out for you, okay? On all of the different acceptable like patient care experience, all right? So for sure, like, if you are hitting any of these things, like if you were an optometrist or an ortho tech, a paramedic, a PT aide, um, a PT assistant, all of these things are acceptable and likely it will be acceptable for um, some of those schools that you're applying to because these are like all pretty much clinical stuff. Things that are not acceptable, coding and billing, you're not really seeing patients like that, it's shadowing. Um, vet assistants or techs because you're dealing with uh, animals, not people, um, being a chaplain, those kinds of things. All right. So uh, I think this is a good list to kind of have in your back pocket if you're looking for uh, what you should get your patient care experience in. And it just gives you information about Anne Arundel Community College um, and where it's located and gives you some emails that you can hit up if you need more information, like the registrar. What is this? Do I have to apply through CASPA? Yes. So frequently asked questions. Do my prerequisites need to be completed by the application deadline? All prerequisites. Okay, so this is must be posted with grades on official transcripts submitted to CASPA. Okay, so there's nothing, no prerequisites can be outstanding. Again, we saw that with some programs where they will allow one or two to be like in completion, but have to be completed by the time of acceptance. This program says they all need to have, they need to be completed and have their grades. So that is something to keep in mind. Does my degree need to be completed by application? Conferred degrees and date must be posted on official Okay, so you can't be like in the process of completing your degree. It should be done. Does my, does the type of bachelor's degree matter? No. If I retake courses, which grade will count for my GPA? For cumulative GPA and science GPA, everything is um, calculated through CASPA. So it's so whatever your CASPA calculated GPA is going to be. And that's really just going to be an average of all of your grades. Um do I still need to take the GRE if I have a master's degree or higher? Yes. Okay. Uh, can I work while I'm in PA program? They don't recommend it, but you know, who's who's no one's really stopping you. Can I get credit for previous academic work? No. How often do you admit students? So only once a year, like this is not like a roll in admission where it's like three times a year, twice a year, once a year, starting in um, the summer months, uh, CASPA application sent in by July 1st so that you can have it within, um, within time for that September 1st deadline. Uh, they don't offer a part-time PA program is 25 months and they do allow foreign medical grads and foreign students to apply. Uh, we went through all of this. There are 40 seats available. Okay, so this is nice. Uh, typical number of applicants receive applications receive is eight hundred. So I mean, there are some schools that receive like fifteen hundred, two thousand plus applications. Um, the school says their typical, like their average, is about eight hundred. It may be up um, in the years to come, just because like the PA program, PA school is like becoming more and more like widely like known, and you know the profession is becoming more widely known. And so people, you know, really want to become PA. So that may be up, but uh, you're looking at um, <laughs> 40 seats possibly available, right? Uh, and 800 applicants. So that's like a, that's a pretty, pretty hard stretch. Like when you're breaking down, like, 
from 800 applicants to maybe like 100 um, people that you're going to offer an interview to, and then 40 of the 100 are actually going to be admitted. So all things to keep in mind. Um, but that is that. I think um, I don't think there's anything else. Uh, let's just take a look at their faculty and staff, okay? Um, Janice says, is the introduction to statistics from community college enough to cover it? Uh, I think it should be, honestly. Uh, that would be something that you have to talk to the program directly about. So like, just go to those uh, various different links that they had. Uh, for the admissions uh, or the contact uh, page and just ask them that specifically because they're there to answer those type of questions, but it really should. Um, I don't see why not. My statistics, like once I retook it, my, no one had an issue with my statistics and I took it at a community college. So uh, Lakeisha said, really appreciate all the care, concern, and energy that you put into helping us. Thanks. You, see my, you hear my voice cracking and my hair is crazy. I just washed it. So this is all for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's all for you guys. Uh, this is awesome. Thank you for this, Adana. Oh, no problem. And um, Ayanna was just saying she was wondering the same thing. Uh, let me just go back. I'm going to share this with you guys really quickly before we end this video. Um, again, to Friday, I will be doing another live, but it will only be to those that are on GTCU. So um, if you're interested in any of the Nova schools, you should go check us out. All right. So I wanted to look at their faculty and staff. So this is Dr. Hendricks. She is the assistant dean and the program director. Kimberly Bizzle, uh, Dr. Bizzle is the medical director for the program. Ms. Newman is the assistant program director. Uh, Ms. Om, um, she is the academic coordinator and assistant professor, so she teaches. Dr. Archibald, what is she, the program director Research admin. Okay, so let me just. Okay, it says Dr. Hendricks is the program director and associate professor. But then it says that Dr. Archibald is also the program director. So there's two program directors, I guess, which is interesting. Uh, Dr. Yang is a surgical PA with 20 years of experience, um, and he is adjunct faculty. Professor Fleming, she's an associate professor. Uh, Dr. Galloway, she's an assistant professor. Uh, so these are all of you, all the people that will be your teacher, uh, Professor Galvin, Dr. Magder, Dr. May. At least they all look friendly. Dr. Odeski. Oh, she's uh, she's the farm D, so she's probably teaching you guys pharmacology, which is cool. I love my pharmacology teacher. Mm. Professor Russell looks pretty young. All these people look really young. Oh, he graduated in 2017. What year did they graduate? Graduated in 2009. So it's very young. Um, professor here. Naya Words, Associate Professor and Program Director, Masters of Science in Health. Dr. Wirt. Not really sure what she teaches. Nicole Wooten is also an associate prof assistant professor. And then these are your staff. These are people who really do all the hard work, you guys. They're the ones that are like working behind 
uh, the Saints, making sure that the program runs. So uh, be kind to all of your staff. But that is that. I think those are all of like the important things to really look at. We already saw pretty much the cost. Um, but let's give you like a full. I don't think it gives you like a full. It doesn't. It doesn't give you a full bro- breakdown um, of what it's going to be. But I mean, you can calculate. It was about $100,000. So yeah, that's it. Okay, you guys, I hope you uh, enjoyed that. If you have any other programs that you want me to review, please, you guys, leave them in the comment section below. Um, Again, I'll be doing Nova on Friday, one of the Novas, because there's like a gajillion of them. Um, And then join me again on Sunday for another video. And back on Tuesday, and we're going to be doing it in the evening slash afternoon. Um, I'm thinking more along the lines of like six o'clock rather than 730, uh, just so that I'm able to accomplish everything in a timely fashion. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Um, And if you have any questions for me, you know what to do. Drop them in the comment section. Thank you guys so much for watching. Follow me on Instagram at Adana the PA and on Instagram at Get That C University. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye. See ya.